What's up, guys? Welcome to your weekly podcast presented by Zyori TV, brought to you tonight by your host, Bron the Source Mitchell. This is League Live. Host Angel Vigil is actually broke down on his way back from Vegas. No, he did not lose all of his money. It was really just some car trouble, but we'll be soldiering on without him. Here with me today are the usual suspects, Will Slice Thompson and Josh Huspiffing Raven. How are you guys doing today? Doing doing good. Hello. Managed to get out of all the snow that came. Yeah, no, me and me and Will are uh, out northeast, and we got, what, something like... Over two feet of snow. Yeah, I, I think more than oh, no, two feet. Yeah, well, two, two feet. Two feet. Two feet, and then ice on the roads, and then you live up in, like, the middle of the woods, and it just gets bad. Yeah, I don't live in the woods. But uh, to start off, the CPS finished a little while back. We, we missed our show last week, unfortunately, because... More tech difficulties. More Mostly tech. Angel's fault. Angel's Angel's Wait, fault it was again. Angel's fault. It was Angel's fault. Yeah. It was Angel's fault. He was he was away where he was. He was in Vegas running, uh, doing doing a, a show, DJing a little bit. But yeah, the CPS finished up. Curse Academy. They took the end of the CPS, so they were the first team to qualify for IPL six. And then we had the second team to qualify uh, last week for IPL six. It was Cloud Nine. They finished dude, the first IPL official qualifier. IPL's been running all these other qualifiers through other tournaments like the CPS and the Solomid tournament which is currently going on and we'll be getting into the finals of that this week. Yeah, I don't think anyone was surprised that Cloud9 got into IPL fast. Yeah, I mean, they're long standing, very very good. Yeah. Though they their After team has their split teams, up. I'm not even sure who's, who's on, on the, the team anymore. I, I know that that group yeah. through so I know many Name By the changes. way, um, so I heard something like Nien might be becoming a starter. Cause, sorry for diversing, but Nien might be becoming a starter for Man because he's former Cloud Nine, huh. and they're going to be replacing Heartbeat. I saw that but rumor anyway. too, but I think that's just rumor mill of cycling around. Yeah, I, um, well, is Nien is Nien subbing for one of the other teams? Nien. Nien is subbing for Man, but they're making him starter or something like that. That's what I heard. I think or something like that. I don't know. That'll be good for him. He's he's up there as one of the better AD carries in North America. Oh no, Nien Nien start uh, start for cutest of cats or whatever they're called now. Or oh, Azure. Like that, or whatever they were called. Azure cats. Well, aren't they looking? Yeah, Azure cats. Yes, yes, and they left. So That's where it's from. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're looking for support and AD players. Oh. Okay. And Bloodwater just wait, but didn't. Wait, sorry, their support get, player was Bloodwater. It, it was Bloodwater, but I think you're getting a little ahead of yourself. And he, no, and he is now the player for Marn. He's now starting for Marn. Yeah. And so they're going to get Nian in, surely, just to be like, buddies. Mm. But, no, so okay, now sorry, the, I'm just... the TSM tournament is uh, finishing up really soon. Yeah, no, the last, the, the finals, finals, last the eight teams. So, Curse Academy there, so... I, me and Angel took issue with this about two weeks ago about teams that had already qualified for IPL 6 sticking around in the IPL tournaments, but there is money on the line. There's about $6,000 for these teams. Um, Curse Academy and DNG will be playing against each other. Winner of that will play against the winner of Cloud9 versus Tower Dive TV, and then Dignitas Academy versus FX Open, and the winner of that will play uh, Falafel Gaming and Square Duck, and then so on and so forth, moving to the end, and it's actually top two teams here. So first and second place don't even need to play each other for the spot. People just have to make it to the uh, semifinals. Here's what's funny. There's a chance, well, because Cloud9 and Curse Academy would have to play each other if they both won and one would go down to the loser's bracket, you could theoretically have them be the top two, which would mean... Another set of games would need to be played. Yeah, to make to see who the other two teams going on would be, so by having these teams in um, the these qualifiers, you cause the problem of what if they win? You have to start bumping teams down. But these are also really good teams that are bouncing out teams that get uh, seated. I don't know against a skill level way too high for them, and they don't ease into anything. That's that's definitely true. I don't know. It's 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 such a big toss up because it's like. Is it fair 
to tell them they can't play <coughs> when there's money on the line. That yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Because there is money on the line, I it's acceptable because that is not fair to let to be like, sorry guys, you can't play it because you already have half the prize. Let them have the prize money, but it's just it becomes problematic when you have to figure out who's seated to go into yeah, IPL. That'll, that'll be its own fun little predicament. And continuing with IPL stuff, we also have uh, Ivy Law qualifier. Uh, that is going to be happening, I think, this weekend. They've been, they had a bunch, like a ton of qualifiers going on um, to get to their top 16 teams, and then the top 16 teams will be playing this week. Um, with that in mind, do you, have you guys Ivy looked Law at any of those fine. people? Like, I, I don't really know any of the Ivy Law teams. I remember the one from the Lone Star Clash. But. Yeah, I, I haven't been keeping up on my collegiate law. I don't. It's, it's American. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> jo- our EU sp- correspondent, everyone. Yeah, for real. It's like, yeah, so Josh, yeah. what's going on to the EU challenger scene? What what tournaments are they playing for? None. Yeah, <laughs> there is none. <laughs> Just about. All right. I think I think like, we're... We, I'll even I'll even ask Fake later. He'll confirm there's nothing going on. Which is a little depressing. Th- yeah. So. Yeah. The, I guess that's another topic we can bring up. There's all this stuff for the North American teams to get into the LCS, but so far there's nothing for EU teams. Well, think about well, EU, soon. EU tournaments. There is nothing on DreamHack, right? No one said anything yet. The but only like, tournaments coming up in Europe are I-Series in England, which is not worth anything, really. And then Copenhagen Games, which is worth more, but not still not on the standard of like an MLG or an IPL. So, I'm, well, the thing I'm trying to get at is we've had all this information for, what, about a month now on all these qualifiers. And Except I'm pretty MLG, sure... who just yeah, well, are releasing their info now. But, just be, well, they like to wait till the last minute. But, okay. um, but that's the thing. Like, you guys are going to have to rush so much to get into all these events for the qualifiers unless they decide to not no, do it. No, there's no events. We can just make... They're going to be through a uh, ladder. Yeah, but yeah, that's that, that, that that kind of the point. Like, if it's only through the ladder, that's it feels like EU is not getting nearly the love it should compared to NA. Whoa, the stream just went crazy, by the way. And um, yeah, well, I, I honestly don't know. So mm. yeah, the top eight teams in the rank ladder, the Inner Flame, just confirmed it there, and that's yeah. fine. Everyone's it's good because it means that. It's easier. We don't need to sort out as many scrims because you just go in ladder matches and you're playing against people you'd scrim against anyway. So that is true. It makes life easier for the managers representing <laughs> manager chat. You guys don't have you. to do as much travel. The rest of us are all like scrambling together trying to figure out whether or not we can get our guys to these tournaments. Exactly. Can I get uh, to Las Vegas? Go out, <laughs> we could Everyone's go out to the Copenhagen that. Games and the Copenhagen Games would probably be good practice for us. We'd probably play against good teams and maybe get some money out of it. But it's not that important. Like We'd rather just get prepared, get ready for um, the qualifiers All right. and hit top eight, obviously, of course. Fair enough. All right, I guess we will move on past Challenger, Challenger Circuit teams over to our two segments of the day. First one's going to be roster changes. Will, what do we got in terms of people moving around? Because I'm almost positive we've got like six or seven big ones. Yeah, we've had a few subs announced in the last week or two. Um, well, first off, one that if you watched IEM recently, you'll remember K- Cade, Keed team. Yeah, they sure. were at IPL yeah. Sao Paulo. IEM Sao Paulo. IPL. IEM Sao Paulo. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> IPL stays only in the States. <laughs> but MIT or MIT, I'm not sure how he pronounces his name, joined them. If you watch them, you'll remember they were the Whoa. ones who had the insane comeback. Wait, was that... Are they that a Korean them. team? No, they're a Brazilian no. team. Oh, Keed was the Brazilian team. I remember that. They were Koi, playing, Koi, they were playing Koi, against the Korean team. Right, and everyone and they, was like, the Koreans have got this, the Koreans have got this, they're going to wipe the floor with the Brazilians, and then the Brazilians won. And then, everyone, that, and then I think it was Joe Miller who made a joke, or it might have been D-Man who made a joke about um, how Brazil apparently can take out Korea, but and I can't do it. It was it was really weird because that's the only game I watched the out of one, all the of that. Where IEM. Brazil showed showed its merit. Yeah, and that's it's the only game anyone good. cared about anywhere. 
Even even the finals, it, that game was more talked about than the finals. The fact that a Brazilian team took a game from a Korean team. Yeah, I remember what it took us took NA six months to take a game off the Koreans. Took a while. <laughs> we don't like to talk about it. <laughs> um, Wait, why did we just get tweeted by someone with a hundred thousand followers? Sorry, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, off topic. <laughs> because some people have connections here, Josh. Moving on. Oh, done. Moving on, uh, Wild Turtle, Wings of Death, and Dan Din joined TSM. We already subs. knew Dan Din was going to be TSM yeah. sub. He's been, he's, he's he's been like, sub. well, yeah, he's no, we've known that since we've coach. known that since late Dan, January. Dan Din is the coach of TSM. Yeah, he's been puffing his chest about that for a while. Wings of Death isn't going to play ever. He's there for streaming money. He's there just to be. And TSM want him as a brand, TSM, like the yeah, TSM can, is a brand. And they I brand think we, him as TSM. I think having Wings, wings in the some of his stream money. Wings well, goes, oh, I'm from TSM, watch me, and he gets more <laughs> viewers. Here's the interesting thing. These players, wouldn't that mean that they're going to be in Game Crib, the TV show? Yes. Dan Din is. I doubt. I don't even think Wings of Death and Wild Turtle. I don't maybe think Wild Wings Turtle of Death is going to live in the house, or Wild I th- Turtle. I think Wild Turtle's planning to be like a long-term replacement for Reginald, is my opinion. <laughs> That's a long-term replacement. I no, I mean, Reggie's I think... stepping I don't, down I don't, anytime I soon. That makes I sense, think he might though. soon. I mean, I think he's gonna have a lot of business. Like, back think in the of day. how much business. Think of how much business he's got now. Like, he's this. His company, his project's getting really big. Like, true. You know what I mean, Reggie seemed really serious back in the day when he was like, "Yeah, I'm definitely looking to retire and step back and have someone else take the position." If, plus, if they get Turtle, or um, no, they could be going for an academy team. I guess maybe with but they wins tried and that. world yeah, they, yeah, they, they tried, tried it when it wasn't really viable. Back, like what, they, TSM Evo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they like did the, it back this, when not this, everyone had an academy team, and they were trying to take actual pros and put them on a team. Remember, they, their new gaming house has a setup of gaming room with 10 computers. Yeah, like, they have a LAN. They've even said... A LAN, they have a, they even it's said ridiculous it's that they have a LAN room in their house. Yeah, yeah they, said, they why said not? They could, bring te- they could bring teams in to play against. So and it would make sense if they build an academy team so they have an in-house practice team. Yeah, just someone they can put strategies against they don't want to show, which, I don't know, it's not really a TSM style, but maybe. Um, next up, Bloodwater, as Josh said earlier, becomes GGU support. I am Anya. Oh, Anho. he went to GGU. Yeah, no, okay. he, moved, he moved to GGU, and I remember during the LCS qualifiers, Bloodwater carried so hard. There was this one game... Um, we're sitting there, teams all sitting there watching, and uh, Go Suzuna, the AD carry from Fear, is just like losing it, just losing it at, over <laughs> Bloodwater, just like, just like so impressed by his play. And Bloodwater is a really good player, and I yeah, remember Suzuna is the one that just screams at anything like, "I gotta say yes, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> that is Zuna, but I remember Bloodwater back when he was on um, CLG Black. And him and him and Hoodstomp were playing together, and Bloodwater is just phenomenal at just making plays, like making really really big plays that shouldn't happen, and that is definitely GGU style, just like all in, balls to the wall. Here's a play that really Every, shouldn't work, but we make it work. Everyone yeah. said that GGU were the closest. There's the top four, obviously Dig, TSM, Curse, COG, and everyone said that GGU were the closest of the other four yep. to becoming to getting on their level. And followed yeah, followed sure, by fear. So I mean, look, they've been around. You know what? Looking at really? the brackets. Looking at the really brackets. They, by fear? Well, that's what everyone was saying back at at the beginning. I, I well, Vulcan guys, it's Vulcan. 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 Vulcan, Vulcan command. Um, Zero to five. There's definitely more. Oh, here's what took a while. Loco Doco going to Najin. You mean Loco oh, Doco yeah. finding another team? Yeah, mostly Loco Doco finding another team. That took a while. I mean, what's he had to... uh, He sat out, what, one OGN season? I just... I don't know why nobody picked him up faster after he left CLG. Because everyone was sitting on their rosters. Everyone was like, all right, let's finish up the OGN season and then get prepped for, you know, getting ready for the next, like, big set of wall tournaments, which is, you know, the Invitationals from LCS, the, the International Invitational from IPL, um... All that kind of stuff. They it made sense that people waited a little while, and it gave Loco Doco time to you know test the field because with all the changes over on the Korean side, like the CJ Entis thing, 
Um, nods and sword changing around their rosters. You know, all the Korean teams re reshuffling. It makes sense that he waited. Yeah. I just wish we could have seen him get on a team faster. Because he's good news. <laughs> <laughs> He yeah. makes for good news because he's such a well-known player. That's true. And, you know, he is back. He is now on Najin, so... What was it during his um, time? Quote from the article, uh, during his time in the United States, he repeatedly said that he regretted the decision to go to the U.S. and they yeah, should have stayed in Korea. Obviously. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. he jumped. Chip, originally. I feel like he bad. just got an offer. He was bad at COG. He got money. He like, oh, got an offer and they have a gaming house. Yeah. Um, one last bit of news for subs. I don't know if we talked about it, but it's kind of old now. Um, for Dragonborns, when Broken Shard stepped down because he has to do he has to do his military service with the Israel with the Israeli IDF, something, the Israeli rather. Defense Force. The Israeli Defense Force. Um, yeah, didn't even so. didn't even remember that. But he's okay. he, he's gone for he's only gone for a couple of months. But he said something like. He's not going to put himself straight back in if everything's going well. He'll just sit at coach. And so they brought in Maluno from Kersey U because they didn't qualify. I think it shows a lot about players when so many players like Gigi, um, like they bench themselves knowing that if they're there, they're not going to be helping the team. But not only that, like what he said, what you said he said of coming back and like, oh, things are going well. They don't need me to just hop in and mix things up right now. Yeah, it makes sense that people are willing. He's still to... doing stuff as well. He's still like sorting scrims. I'm pretty sure he's still working with the team. He's just not going to be able to play yeah, or travel. Yeah, the fact that the them. culture allows for an administrative position is just—it's good for esports. And that somebody that's on the team can transition to that coach position or manager position so easily, because he can still sit in a Skype call with them in theorycraft. Yeah. All right. Um and. I mean, I'm Less. sure he'd love to play, but if it's going well, he's not going to ruin his team by just yeah, yeah. the last bits of he's still the roster captain. stuff. <laughs> yeah, last bits of roster stuff. Let's see, Azure Cats looking for a new There's AD or support. There. Yeah, which um, if you notice, you got that Reddit thread which someone may be nice enough to um, <laughs> post. I am actually, I have actually applied for that, and you can see my application is the top comment. <laughs> Three. <laughs> 350 upvotes or so. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep up very, that very one. Nice. And, then, <laughs> and then to finish off, Navi is looking to open up a U.S. gaming house and looking for a top team, top tier League of Legends team to yeah. take under their wing. I mean, there's no LCS teams for them to snag. So, do you think they'd be they willing to They could snag Marn. Marn doesn't snag, have a big brand. They could snag Marn, but I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I think Marn's too proud for that. Yeah, though. I don't think he'd be willing to. He likes it when everyone says his name. Yeah, he like he likes his name on everything. So we'll have to see whether or not they pick up a uh, a challenger to your team, which wouldn't be a bad idea if they sit around, they wait a bit, wait to see who comes out top on IPL. That would be a good time to start looking at one of the teams. All right, now I think we're gonna move on to uh, lightning round. Just some odd topics, some things that were here and there that uh, didn't really make any you know real big news. So. The way this is going to work, guys, is the first time we've ever done this on the show. Everyone's going to get 30... I'm going to introduce a topic. We each get 30 seconds to formulate a sh short opinion on it, and then we move on to the next thing. So the first thing... So, so, what's up, so I've got 30 seconds just to read from the top comment of the Reddit post here. If there's a Reddit post. <laughs> oh, ooh. If there's a Reddit <laughs> post, Josh. So first thing is the college program in North America... Riot is introducing a program that's going to allow college teams and clubs to or help organize lands and just promote overall competitive esports in the college scene. I think it's a really cool idea. I think it's helping to expand and legitimize, um, you know, all of competitive gaming. Will, um, I think it's cool because it might let a lot of players go to college now because I know a lot of players skip college or put it off while they're being pros, it lets them go to college and still compete in these events. Josh? Uh, yeah, being English and all, I didn't really look too deeply into this, <laughs> but it looks cool. I mean, I'd love it if it was English. It'd be pretty sick for my college, but yeah, okay. it's good for Americans. Right, right, please. Right, please move, to, move it to EU. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right. Yeah. 
Next thing, there's a lol themed restaurant in China. Lol themed to the degree at which the waiters are Ezreal's, Caitlin's, and Twisted Fates. And <laughs> the there are dishes. There's a Cassiopeia dish, which is actually snake. There's an ergot dish, which is actually crab. They use the uh, giant enemy crab god. Yeah, picture, they, they use the crab the crab god skin. And then there's the scarners, which are the yeah scorpions. the scorpions. Like this is crazy. I'm gonna go with it they looks, don't have oh, the sorry. licenses to do this from Riot or Tencent at that. Question mark. I'm gonna go with they don't that they didn't deal with the copyright stuff. Probably not. Yeah. So I hope it stays open, and I hope like Riot or Tencent reaches out to them to make it better. But if they were to somehow get closed down soon from lawyers, I, I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> Josh, anything? Um, yeah, I, I know pretty much well, what Will said is true, obviously. The uh, uh, licensing and stuff, but it just looks really good. <laughs> I want it like this. <laughs> I know, right? Don't you want to go there? Put them in the States. I also said them that in the article they're making a World of Warcraft theme park as well, so China's just gone crazy for this gaming stuff. That's true. All right, last thing. Um, I am, as as we on this show have thoroughly stated, I am has sort of lost a lot of its mystique. But the I am finals are lined up in some of the big matches. We've got Blaze going up against Gambit Gaming. That's one of the first big matches, and we've got uh, who else is it? Evil Geniuses is going to be going up against SK Telecom, who took out a lot of big European teams. Quick thoughts. Oh, uh, it's will, other side. Will, it's you. No American teams are in it. Yeah. Okay. Then I don't care. <laughs> oh no! Evil Geniuses is there. It'll be interesting because these are, I guess, just teams that can afford to go. That's what IEM has become. It's like teams that bother with IEMs. And no, this 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 is a good. This shot is the at... final. This, yeah, this you have to qualify for this. Yeah, but these are all the teams that bothered with IEM. And could pay for it, but but if you take a look at who's here, you've got Gamma Gaming Fanatic, Incredible Miracle, CJ Entis Blaze, yeah. CJ Entis Frost, Evil Geniuses. Like, this is a really good showcase of everybody but North America. <laughs> so what you're saying, well, what you're saying is, sorry, the top Euro European teams are there, the top Asian teams are there, only the top American teams aren't there. <laughs> Even a Brazilian team is there over the Americans. Yeah, no, Pain, uh, Pain, Ga Pain Gaming, which I think was originally Pain Razor, um, one of the Brazilian teams, and I think they they did did they qualify through Sao Paulo? Were they the ones who won? Because um, I thought a Korean team won. It would. I have no idea. Didn't look. It's Didn't look. again. It's Didn't IEM. Watch. It doesn't capture my attention anymore. Which is thoroughly depressing because, you know... Like, I wish it, I wish it did. They got big off of IEM. All right, so that cleans up our right lightning round, and I think we'll be moving on to our EU guest of the day. Um, are we going actually, for a guest now, on. or are we breaking before, first? Before we move on, I looked it up. Pain Gaming is actually 18th on the IEM charts, which means that Team Alternate, Elo Hell... Kula, Lumper, Hunters. But I think they couldn't take any more teams from other regions. CJ Entis, or, yeah, just playing it's like, Dude, it's Entis. like the Olympics, dude. Everyone's got to get a shot now. Well, uh, the Americans didn't. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> the Americans are like the wrestling. <laughs> Gone. All right, okay, so, so we're going to take a quick break. A two-minute break? All right, guys, we'll be back in two minutes. And with you can... uh, Josh doing a uh, you know quick little quick little talk with the coach from Copenhagen Wolves. And before we go, you can actually tweet questions to Fake at Zyori TV. It's down at the bottom yeah, right. Yeah, you just need to see. If you're stuff. watching the vod, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> hi, vod people. Uh, yeah. So.
Are we having that problem we had with Josh? Yeah, we're having the same tech issue that we were running in with Josh in the earlier. That's weird. Yeah, no, I'm not quite sure why it's doing what it's doing. Alright, so I think we are live again. Uh, okay, we yeah, we're live. Let's just go live. All right, so He's going to... We're gonna Fakes we're gonna be gonna getting <laughs> his Skype. Yeah, we'll be getting him in here hear us? Can. Say what? Okay, yeah. Uh, go live, live, live. Yeah, so put us on. Every hey guys, everyone can hear us. <laughs> yep. No. So we're having we're just so of... good with tech difficulties today. So we're having a couple of small Skype issues, but we'll be getting uh, getting our guest in here as soon as possible. Till then, I think we'll talk a little about. EU LCS, what's been going LCS. on? He's put his name wrong on stream, apparently. Aww. I'm just saying he's put his name wrong on stream. <laughs> Sad face. <laughs> it's okay, but guys. Anyway, My name was spelled two. wrong for the longest time. But that was intentional, <laughs> Will. That was intentional. There's purpose there. Um, we... Oh, fake, just redrawn the call. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, week two, anyway. I actually did an article about this, doing my predictions, and um, I went seven for eight on predictions. Oh, which one, which one did you mess up on? Which one did you mess up on? Um, Wolves vs Giants. Wolves let me down and lost again. Fakes here. <laughs> He's got his webcam. Ah, there we go. Oh, you can see it all. Yes, maybe sort it out on the stream. You know what? Everyone's much. used to um, esports in general, so this is nothing to them. Yeah, no. Like two minute wait. Just this happens at every event, but for like two times, twelve times as long. All right, Josh. So we'll let we'll let you two take it away on uh, on the matchups from last week, and then some matchups on this week, and all the good events of EU West. Fake. Why you let me down? Why you lose to Giants? Come on. Uh, we didn't want you to win a bit. Oh, what? Big, uh, basically, I don't know. I think. We had a really good show <laughs> off, but I think there was a lot of miscommunication between uh, Foreign Lord and Godbro at least, since we have never played with him at all. I mean, when the first game Foreign Lord came in versus SK, it actually looked like it was going all right for a while. Oh, but okay. then it kind of went all. That was against wrong. Gambit. Was it against SK? Or? Against Gambit. Gambit, maybe. Yeah. Well, he yeah, maybe really Gambit. Well. But I actually, uh, it's hard to tell. I'm not, I'm not sure if Gambit just played really, really bad or friend or played really, really good, to be honest. But he definitely played, I uh, don't know how to put that, but the communication was way better in the first game and the second. Not sure if it was the motivation or how it was, but... Well, it, yeah. We're saying that the communication was the problem because Fern Lord had to come in. Um, yeah. The reason for that was because the test couldn't play. Yeah. And do you want to explain to everyone why the test couldn't play? Well, I think everyone knows right now, but. Yeah. To make a long story short, uh, he was talking on the phone on the street outside the hotel uh, alone with his girlfriend, I believe it was, when. Three local guys from Cologne came out to him, uh, and they wanted to steal this iPhone 5, which is yeah, kind of new. I think he got it one week ago. Uh, I don't, he didn't want to give him to them at the start. Uh, then they decided to beat him up, steal his phone, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. And he yeah, he got out of it like he. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, he wasn't too hard hurt. Is that how you say it? Uh, fuck. He wasn't too he wasn't physically hurt too bad. Yeah, that's sorry. That's how I put it. Uh, but he had a lot of pain in the backs, which prevented him from focusing. Uh, so he basically told the team that he couldn't play. Uh, so we need to f like find a substitute really, really quick. 
and since we have to play had to play in like four hours we it wasn't possible to get our original sub from denmark so a uh, esl admin just as uh, said he like he know he knew uh foreign lord and he probably could convince him to play for us but i mean it's fair enough like I wouldn't want to play after being mugged outside, but uh, it was nice for Fred and Lord to pop down. I assume he lived pretty nearby, I guess. Yeah, he did. And uh, then he played, but you still didn't win. Damn you. Uh, no, it was fine. <laughs> but, so what did you think about... The th you played three games yeah. against SK, against yeah. Gambit, and then against Giants. Yeah. You've already spoke about the Giant, the Gambit one, sorry. In which he said, you don't know if they were playing bad or you were playing well that game. Uh, what about the SK one, the first game he played? Um, I think the, like, the first game we had in the LCS was against, S against SK as well. Uh, we haven't, hadn't scrimmed SK at all until uh, LCS because we didn't want to show our, out, our, <laughs> out our tactics to SK. But SK played Y and Twitch, which apparently everyone told us that we should have banned against them. Uh, so we did that second game, and it turned out to be an important factor of the game. Uh, that's playstyle, at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, I just kind of think that SK showed to the world that they're still a top three EU team, in my opinion. And... Just... I've said I've said that before and been laughed at. So well, I think SK I is agree. like I think the best team at the moment is, without any doubt, Evil Geniuses. Uh, second team, in my opinion, is uh, Gambit of Fnatic. Gambit when they focus and don't play like they did against us. And third team is, without nearly no doubt, SK at the moment. So um so. You said Gambit, like they played against you. Yeah. If do you think if Gambit were playing against Evil Geniuses, they would have lost the match? If instead of you, if it was Evil Geniuses, like not to sound harsh or anything, but do you think that's how bad it was, or don't you think you played well at all, or what was it? I think we, not to say we played bad at all. That's not how I meant it. But the thing is, as nearly all other teams says about us, we lack experience. Uh, we need. The ability to close games. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we need we need the experience, and we need the experience to learn how to close the games. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that we played uh, bad against Gambit. I just don't think Gambit pulled out. I think they kind of underestimated us at the beginning uh, because they thought, okay, this guy has two subs. Uh, not doing yeah. too well at the early, but I f I'm proud of the team at least because they did a good show and they played really, really well. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, sorry to say, it's zero and five at Co for Copenhagen Wolves. Uh, next week you'll get Bjergsen back. Am I right? Yeah, we will. So you get Bjergsen back and you'll be playing against Fnatic in the opening game of the weekend, then against All Authority, and then at the end, Dragonborns. Yeah. Um, how do you think you'll do in those games? Um, I think, as yeah, basically as everyone else thinks as well, Bjergsen is a really, really important factor of our team. He is, in my opinion, one of the best mid laners in the EU as well. But I think the first week we shouldn't expect too much, not from him, but from the team, because we have played with Kautzart and his play style for, don't know, that's two months now without playing one single team game with Bjergsen. Uh, so we need to get him back into the play style of the Wolves again, because he's playing solo queue for two months straight now. And we changed our strategies a lot to make them fit with Kautzart. But I think he will show to the crowd that he is who they expect him to be. 
And so you think you think you're going to do well next week? Do you think you'll be you'll think you'll be able to put up a match against Fnatic? Or do you think it's too do you think it's too soon that Bjergsen's back? Or do you think you'll have enough time to get back into the back into the swing of things? No, this week uh, we have the last couple of weeks we have still some people going to school and not no schools got going to work, but they quit last Friday. So this week we have a lot more time to practice. Uh, so basically, instead of go having, I think we have six hours of practice. The last couple of weeks we have now ten each day, ten or eight, and nice. that's gonna gonna make it really build a big improvement for us. And having Bjergsen back is gonna make a big improvement as well. So I think we're gonna improve a lot to next week. Uh, I'm just saying that. Getting Bjergsen back doesn't make us the best team, but it makes us a better team. Right. Not to okay, talk I've been told to ask. I've been told to ask a couple of questions from Chad. I don't know if they make any sense or not. Something about a team called Tricked. Do you know of a team called Tricked? Yeah, I was <laughs> with them at the weekend. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's probably why there's some questions on him. But whatever. Do you think they're good? Is the question. Why did you play against them? If I think they are good, I'm guessing. Yeah, are they good? <laughs> I think they are a bunch of trolls. <laughs> we say it on. <laughs> they, at the moment, they are the second best Danish team, but they still <laughs> lack a lot of experience. They, uh, they, they got nothing on the walls. No, they're saying that they're a better team than Wolves because we've never scrimmed them, so we can't prove we are better. But I don't. <laughs> I think being in the LCS might prove that. Yeah, that's we're a what little I bit better them. than them. Maybe. I was. I, I was <laughs> you don't scrim people that aren't in the LCS. You don't scrim. You don't scrim noobs. Let's just oh, leave it at that. That's kind of what I told them as well. Um, right, so I guess as a rounding off kind of question, come the end of the 10 weeks or 11 weeks or 12 weeks or something, the first uh, half of the season is, where do you think you're going to be? Like, Do you think you're going to be competing for those top spots if Bjergsen has enough time to get back into it? Or do you think you're going to be in the unfortunate relegation series? I'm not sure what it's called. Yeah, I think, I don't... If I remember correctly, I think it's top two from the out of the eight teams who are secured to get in the next season. Uh, I, I actually sure. think it's top four on both sides yeah. in A and E. Top four are safe, but there was rumors about top two. They hadn't actually yeah. changed it. I'm not too sure because about it because I heard like some say it's like top three, then the same say it's top four, then some say it's just only one team, and but I think. To be honest, I think we're at least gonna be in the top eight. Uh, <laughs> I would be surprised. No, not top eight. Sorry. <laughs> top <laughs> six. <laughs> wow, that was stupid. I seem like yeah, it's gonna be pretty yeah, difficult yeah. for you not to be in the top eight. But <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, we're gonna be in the top six at least. Uh, anything below that is unacceptable. Not being too harsh. Um, and I think. A top four is possible, but it's going to be hard. But I think we got what we need to to make it. I wish you good luck, and I hope you do make it into the <laughs> top you. four. Thanks, man. But I think we're done with Fake. That was Fake, coach of Copenhagen Wolves. Any shout-outs you want to make, Fake, before you depart? Uh, basically, I just want to say thanks to all our fans who support us. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Steel Series and Complete, who are our sponsors right now. And uh, keep an eye out of on a keep an eye out. Sorry, an eye out of our Facebook <laughs> page because we have a big announcement this week. So yeah, Ooh. heard it, heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> right, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, um, Bron. Alright, so I think 
as fake departs from uh, from the show, guys, we'll be moving on to NA LCS as we just got a nice look into what's going on in the EU scene. Um, Will, I know your mic is muted. You got to unmute that. Oh no, it's been unmuted for a bit. Oh, okay. I'm just really good at keeping quiet. So we've so like we were saying before, we switch right over to NA EU. We've got you know some highly contested games coming up next week. We've got Evil Geniuses and Fnatic and uh, Fnatic. Or, uh, Evil Geniuses, Fnatic, and then I think that's one of the bigger, biggest games. So Josh, as our EU guy, who do you think? Who do you think's got that Evil Geniuses, Fnatic? Um, Evil Geniuses, personally. I'll be writing a whole article on this. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> yeah, Just guys, me, definitely, looking, definitely be ready, uh, Josh. If you want to throw Ziora your uh, your blog in, you guys can check out Josh's blog where he writes and puts up most of his predictions. So if he's wrong, you can call him on it. Call really him on easily. it next and show. you can cite your source for calling exactly him on next it. show. Well, can come back you. in the chat. I call can us tell out you. on it. Last week, I know my stuff. Last week for the European SS, I'm going to be doing one for NA as well this week, which I'm going to write tomorrow probably. Right, but for EU, I was seven out of eight. So well, let's let's get some some pre some pre writing predictions. Let's start taking some looks at the matches that happened last week. Um, bigger matches, we had Vulcan and TSM. TSM cleaned that one up pretty well. Um, I think we might have predicted that. But TSM Dignitas. How that was did, insane. He, that uh, was that an amazing was game. Insane. Like that that game was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, did did you did, uh, did 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 we predict that one right? I don't remember what our predictions were for last week. I didn't. I didn't think that I at all. Personally. I thought Dignitas was going to get third place in that. Like I, <laughs> I, I think I took TSM too. I think I think most of us took TSM on that one. Yeah. Personally, I took TSM based on the fact that Dig is still getting into their house and getting set up, and I thought that'd be an issue for them. But I guess it's not. It really isn't an issue for them, and they they're actually, just and I think straight the, up man mode. I think something we need to look at is Marn. It's. It was, that right. game. That game they had was embarrassing. Both of them. Yeah. Mostly Marn, the Dignitas one. Yeah. Marn. Marn as well. By the way, someone from someone from Marn made a statement saying, "At the moment, there's no team synergy, so we just go all out and zerg our opponents." Who said that? I haven't got a source on that. I haven't got a source on it. See if you can but see if I you can pull that up something. before we're done. Keep taking a look through there. Uh, Will looking at what we've got for next week. You know, so they are putting their little flame mark as a match to watch. We've got two matches that Riot has qualified as big matches. There are a fair number of ones that I'm interested in, but we don't think they're Dignitas CLG. I don't think they're big matches so much as they're going to be closer matches than the other ones. That might be a good way to look at it. Be, yeah, because but there's Dignitas a, there's and a Marn, CLG. There's a Marn GGU game that's got the little flame. I'm uh, a little confused about that, but. Well, they probably put those down before they saw the first two weeks. <laughs> the first two weeks of Marn. Um, but, you know, ha do you think Marn can take a game? What's Marn's record right now? Are they O? O and 2. Like, o and everything ever? Yeah, they are O and 2. I don't think Marn are going to take a game. I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. That they're not going to take a game off anyone? I, the I only people... They have they played Marne? Complexity yet? I mean, not, Complexi not so complexity. complexity for being... That. Complexity and Vulcan are the only teams I see Marn taking a game off of, and even then, I doubt it. All right, so then, yeah, Dignitas CL Dignitas CLG, CLG, CLG is going to win that one. I, as much as Dignitas show put on a good show, I'm going to say Dignitas. Mm. Uh, I know what will make Dignitas stress happy. I'm sure TSM <laughs> also underestimated. Like, Definitely. all their interviews, they talk, they're like, we don't underestimate, we don't underestimate. There is a huge difference in those games from week one to week two. Well, do you guys remember uh, all that hype that went on about TSM versus Dignitas? Was it TSM versus in Dignitas? The playoffs? In the playoffs, that match where they said that was the easiest one they'd ever had? Yeah. that was Yeah, that was, yeah. Right, that was that match, <laughs> and then Dig takes them down. So, like, as much as I feel CLG is still really, <laughs> eventually, yeah. Um, CLG is still really strong. I am. I, I'm hopping on the dig fan wagon for this match. Nope. I'm staying with CLG. Staying strong. T thing is, TSM can't even use practice. Can't. Sorry. Can't even use lack of practice 
as an issue for it. They may say, oh, you're doing practice much. Curse, St. Vicious said in an interview they've been playing one best of three a day in preparation Curse for the RCS. Curse or TSM? Curse have been playing one best of three a day. Hmm. Yeah, they, that's they, how good actually, they're doing a match one that best I think of three. should have a match to watch Flame on it is the Curse and the GGU game. Because yeah, of how close it game. was the last time they played. I don't think it will. I think Curse is just going to go out and stomp him. Like, well, they said Jackie's gotten will be only... insanely stronger, and their entire said... team cohesion is better. Ever since that video about Jackie not knowing any champions. <laughs> yeah, ever since the video which champions. Jackie got ragged on, Jackie was like, okay, I gotta get myself in gear. Like, if they can do two best of threes a day and do that good, I think when they ramp up their practice, which they are doing this week, then... I think they'll do fine. <laughs> all right, what's uh, all right? So we got those those games so far. Out of all the games, I think we've got sealed. Uh, of of the games that seem you know a little a little skewed, we've got CLG and Complexity. Or that better yet, d- looking at any of these games, you guys see any underdogs? You know. Pull it like nope. really taking it to <laughs> favorites. I mean, no, Vulcan no. complexity, Vulcan's no, G-G- it, it, no, I said it. GGU and curse, GGU G-G-U curse is, is your underdog. underdog. GGU curse is your underdog of the week. Yes, what, what about you, on, Josh? Because it I mean, was, curse can't, it was can, one bad team. Can curse like win forever? No, no, they can't. <laughs> Maybe they, they can. can. <laughs> Maybe they can. They've already beaten everyone, they've already beaten everyone that's difficult. Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's still four six more months. Times. That's, that's, that's what a league is about. A league is about time, and people get better, and people practice more, and things happen. But um, I guess, so that'll be our underdog of NA, the GGU curse game. GGU going to take it over curse. Josh, hopping over to the EU, EU side, any matches you think Whoops. an underdog will take? One second, you've caught me off guard. Let me just try and pull up the <laughs> EU. Yeah, I know, I got, I got you there. Um, 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 there's the Fnatic Copenhagen Wolves game. I, w- I, w- I want to say I want to say Copenhagen Wolves because I like fake <laughs> and because Bjergsen's coming back and hopefully the Tess will be playing. And Ooh, he'll be against all, all good. Authority, what do you think on that match? The against all authority Fnatic I, match. I think against all authority shouldn't have even been in the LCS in the first place. <laughs> That's a little harsh. <laughs> I mean, well, right? I'm just gonna throw it out there. The, they're the Wait, mar- sorry. Of you. The some people team. may, some people watching may know me as a manager of a European team, and our team is kind of bad right now. We never practice really, and we played against <laughs> against the authority. When we played against against the authority, yeah, it sounds weird. Whilst we've not been practicing, and we've gone like two and three to them in five games, and like the three games we lost were close, stuff like that. So, like, and then I don't know, they just kind of pulled out somehow and somehow got in, but I think they're going straight back down. Yeah, it really is a matter of brackets and all that. Like, there's some teams yeah, that damn brackets. made it. Yeah, the, the brackets. I think me, Josh, and uh, Angel, if you guys don't know, we didn't really do heavy introductions on who we got, who we all are. Um, I'm a shoutcaster, and I help manage Tower Dive TV. Josh manages uh, My Revenge, Angel, who isn't with us this week, but if you guys go check out all of our VODs, you guys can see previous weeks and uh, see Angel. He manages One Trick Ponies, so you know all of our teams were pushing for LCS, and uh, Bracket's got a little screwed. <laughs> we had to play. We had, right, this is our Bracket. The number one team in EU Northeast from Ladder, and then Millennium. But Millennium didn't make Just, it. No, yeah, Millennium didn't make it, so... They made it to live. They didn't make it to live. It's not cool. It's not cool. All right. So, as we're kind of winding down, any good questions chilling in the chat that are uh, worth that are worth answering? Because we do it. We've got a couple. No. We've got about five minutes no. left to answer any good questions you guys might have. Anything, or else we're gonna five go. Five talk about stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are we gonna talk about, guys? Uh, we can panic. do our. <laughs> we can do our shoutouts. <laughs> we can do our shoutouts. We can do our shoutouts. No questions really whatsoever. Funny. No, fine. Screw Whatever. it. Alright. Alright, so I guess well, I guess I'll start the shout out. Shout out to my uh, my team, Tower Dive TV and all the guys over there at our casting organization. Come check out our tournaments over the weekends on Saturdays. 
Um, also, over on NESL, everything we have over there, I shoutcast for them as well. has been a little while, but look to see me uh, within the next couple of weeks doing more and more events over there. You guys can follow me on my Twitter, at uh, TheSourceAL. And, yeah, that's about it. Thanks to uh, Frank for coming on. Thanks to Copenhagen Wolves for sparing, sparing his time, sparing him to come and talk with us. And uh, I guess I'll push it over to Will. Oh, okay. Me. Um, yeah, shout out to Enemy Esports. Uh, I do stuff with them. <laughs> it's not called Enemy Esports. It's not even called Enemy Esports anymore. Oh, okay. We're, we're it's currently... It's called Visualize Your Enemy. We're in the middle of a switch. But God, you don't the names even have an organization. Been... The names haven't been finalized yet, so the Twitter's still enemy. It will direct you to visualize your enemy. We're grouping up with an EU organization and announcing our LOL team soon. They're actually a good team, so stay tuned for that. And, is it and me? thanks to Zayori. Yep, and Josh? Well, is it me? Yes, it's you. Shout out to my revenge and my team. Thank you very much, team. Um, my blog, which I'm hoping Mr. Person will post right now. And Zyuri, of course. And Fake for coming on the show. Go Fake. Represent Europe. Yeah. And that's it. I'm done. Peace. All right, guys. So definitely check out all the stuff over on Zyuri TV. Check out our portal. Subscribe to the Twitch channel so you guys know when we're going on going live. It usually is Mondays. Uh, 6 p.m. EST, same as it is here. And hopefully next week we'll have Angel back and have another great show for you guys. Thanks for watching. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh.